Hi, Mike, and welcome back to EntrepreneurCast. It's so great to have you back on the show. Hi, Svetlana. It's lovely to be back on the show. So, uh, Mike, as we talked earlier, we're going to do this weekly show on leadership and conscious leadership. And I know that you're a huge leader in the world of business and, you know, you're very well connected and uh, you're leading all over the world, traveling the world. So, uh, you know, tell, tell us a bit more about the conscious leadership, because I'm sure there are a lot of people uh, listening, but they, they haven't been leaders in their lives. Yeah, for sure. Well, let me first tell you how it developed for me. A number of years ago, going back a long time ago, we were sharing entrepreneurship skills with people all around the world, 46 countries to be exact. And then what we decided is that entrepreneurship itself, the whole for-profit model is broken. So we looked at more of the spiritual entrepreneurship basis. And that meaning um, spirit basically means to breathe. So having the breath in entrepreneurship, having the space to actually create what you wanted. And then I realized it was even much bigger than entrepreneurship because it was about leadership. And it wasn't about spirituality because that has all sorts of trends and connotations to it. It was about consciousness. And consciousness now is one of what the scientists are calling one of the seven bases of reality. And so consciousness for a leader doesn't mean that they have to save the planet. It doesn't mean that they have to do everything good all of the time. But what it means is that they do the deep inner work within themselves that's necessary to fully understand the impact of their footprint on the planet, whether that be as a community leader, um, whether that be as a parent at home, or whether that be the leader of a multi-billion dollar company. So the whole concept of conscious leadership is that you have to work on yourself so that you can become a better version of you so therefore what you do for the world becomes a better version of that so how would you say should one person to start to become well to become to start with to become conscious you know and then obviously to become a leader uh, i think i think a lot of people will be like you know well it's a great concept and all but where do i start how do i become conscious leader yeah that's a very good question because most people have no idea how to become conscious or even if they are conscious and our studies, since we've been doing this, and we, um, we literally kicked off a movement a very short space of time ago. It's just on a 1,000 members now, but it's literally been in a few weeks that it's got to that. But we've been working on this for some years. And our studies into this show that 95% of the people on the planet are not conscious. So that means if you think of 20 of your friends, Basically, one of you is going to be conscious and it's it's probably the person listening to your show, to be quite honest, because they're doing the types of things that other people won't do. So in answer to your question, um, one of the key ways to become conscious is to become present. And that means that while you're listening to me talk, those of you that are thinking about what you're going to have for lunch or where you parked your car or something like that, you're not present. So you're not being conscious, right? So how do you, the question then becomes, how do you bring yourself into the present? And the most simple technique in the world that works every single time is to just take in deep breaths and let them out. Because we're a microcosm of the macrocosm of the universe. So if we allow ourselves to breathe and all our ideas, plans and everything that we do will breathe along with us. And it's, it's absolutely scientifically impossible for you to take deep breaths and let them out and focus on something that you were doing yesterday or thinking about what you're going to do next. So you really become present in that moment. So here's a tip for anybody is that if you're going into a big meeting or if you've got a big sales call or you're going for a job or something like that, to literally stand outside that and take in three deep breaths through your nose and let them out through your mouth will allow you to become more present, more grounded, and therefore more conscious. And when you walk into that meeting and you're more conscious, you're going to get a better result. And you're gonna put out a different energy than you would if you walk in there and you're stressed. Make sense? 
It does make sense. But you know what I was wondering when you started saying that someone might be thinking about lunch or something else, it reminded me of when I go sometimes to networking events and you know, when you talk to somebody and it can go either way or you stop being present or because somebody starts waffling about and telling you all the stuff that doesn't make sense or you see that their eyes are somewhere else and they're like you know not really present how do you become present in that moment well if i was at a networking event and i saw that the person i was talking to wasn't present i'd probably play a game with them so I'd probably, if, if I was talking to you at a networking event and I saw you weren't present, I'd say, so how's the alligator today? And you'd go, sorry, what? And I'd say, well, how's your alligator? And you'd go, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. So we, were you listening? Right? So I'd bring, I wouldn't have any problem in bringing somebody back to presence. If I, if I found I wasn't present, I'd leave. Right? Mm. Because I'm not going to be, the, I'm not turning up at the best version of myself so to become present is better if you're if you're going somewhere like that and you're not feeling yourself or you're feeling a little bit out of your body go and splash some water on your face go and take some deep breaths go and have a glass of cold water not gin right but cold water (laughs) and and bring yourself back in into your body a little bit so that you can communicate on on a level and if you and quite often in business you're not dealing with um, people who are present, particularly often when people are pitching things. And this is for anybody who's ever pitched their business or pitching their, uh, their sales for the, the company they're working for. They can walk into a boardroom of people and those people aren't in their bodies and they're not conscious. They can be doing everything from being on their phone or, or anything like that, right? And so what you have to do then is you have to take control of that meeting. So one of the ways to do that, you could do it like this. You go, so everybody, right? Now, as you heard that, right, that's going to ring through the the podcast there. Everybody's going to get a bit startled and they're going to focus. And so I'm just bringing you all to attention. Um, Or if somebody's on their phone at the the back, I'll say, excuse me. And I go, yeah, I'll say, "Um, can you tell me what website you're looking at? Because it's obviously very good. And I'd like to look at it later myself. Right? So you have to take control of those situations. Um, and being a conscious leader is really about having control of yourself and situations and environments. Because the non-conscious person will sit in that meeting and go, well, if I just start talking, maybe they'll start listening. It ain't going to happen and you're not going to sell anything. You're not going to get the job or you're not going to pitch your business and get the money that you wanted for it. So you have to command that attention. You have to bring everybody into your sphere. So how do you take that control? Do you, would you say that first you have to take control of yourself? And once you do that, it's easier to take control of the audience. And also, you know, it's like when it's one-to-one conversation, it's much easier to take control because you're with that person one-to-one. But then when there is a group and a lot of people, it becomes a little bit more difficult, especially, let's say, to people who are so, hang on never a sec. done you're, public speaking. One sec. Yeah? Your, hair's, your hair's different than the last time we spoke. What have you done with it? Nothing. Is it you different? Haven't. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, what, what's, what's going on there? <laughs> Now, Svetlana, what I did was called a pattern interrupt, okay? Right. Yeah. So actually what I've done is I've just taken control. Right. So there you have, you have somebody in a meeting that may be just talking and it's all about them and their stuff. So you'll find something that will totally disarm them, right? And as you saw there, and if you watch the replay of your video, right, when you did that, you went, oh, and you started touching your hair. You go, is it different, <laughs> Right. So that's a, that's a technique that you could use in a one-on-one basis. Now, in a, in a group basis, don't do it if they're bored like me. It doesn't work, right? <laughs> but in a group basis, what you could do is that you could simply ask people questions. So they're sitting around the table. You see people aren't that conscious or aren't that present. Maybe they're looking down. Most people will be, you know, dicking around on their phones. And you just go, um, 
just excuse me, before you just go back to your phone, can I just ask you a question? And they're like, yeah, sure. And then you'll, you'll ask them a question. And then you'll say, I just wanted to double check because you've obviously got things to do. How long have you personally got for this meeting? All right, there's a question. They're going to go, okay. And then you could say, okay, great. Well, if you've only got 20 minutes for this meeting, I'd really appreciate if we actually focus for that 20 minutes. Would that be okay? Now I'm totally in control. Mm. One of the other things to do in a meeting, now you've got to be bold, right? So this is, this is not a world where being a mouse counts. It doesn't mean you have to be arrogant, right? But you've got to be bold. So if you see one person's controlling the meeting, just put up your hand for a minute and just direct your comment to them and say, excuse me, do you know where we can get a cup of coffee around here? <laughs> because that technically makes them now your secretary and totally depowers them in front of the other people in the meeting. So if I have any sort of meeting, and often this will happen, for instance, when you're in committees and when you're, you know, committees are one thing, there's a lot of politics in committees, whether it be a sports committee, a local community committee, a business committee, whatever. So you'll generally have somebody who likes the sound of their own voice in that. So that's a great way to do it and say, hey, Lana, just before you go on, can I just ask you a quick question? I go, sure. I go, you know, you obviously run a lot of these sort of meetings. Um, what would you suggest is probably the best cafe in this area to do those in? Because it just totally deframes them. But a better one is to get them to do something for you. So, Squitlana, just before you go on, could you just do something for me? Could you just take a piece of paper and just draw this? Mm. Right? Now I'm giving them a command and they're following my command, right? And I'm doing it in a very conscious way. So um, in, in real terms, in psychological terms, in any meeting, there's an alpha and there's a beta person. The alpha has all the control and all the power. The beta has very little power and control, right? So what happens then is from a consciousness viewpoint is you don't want this. You actually want this, right? This is where meetings work. This is where sales are made with the meeting of the minds. You won't do that. This is where jobs are got with the meeting of the minds. So one of the, the great questions that I always teach people that are going for jobs, when they're getting a million questions from the board or the panel or whatever that's, that's interviewing them, I always ask them to say to them, just, just put up your hand after you've had enough questions and just say, excuse me, before we go on, can I just ask you a question that may really help us in this meeting? And of course, they'll say yes. And then you say, what is the one thing that I need to prove to you in the next five minutes that will make you three pick up the phone and ring every other applicant and tell them, don't worry, we've found our person. Mm. That always brings a meeting of the minds and gets rid of the alphas in the room. And it has never failed me personally in getting any of my friends' jobs. No. So the concept of being conscious and leadership is firstly to do that deep inner work in your own life so that you can get to a level of confidence and certainty that whoever you've got in front of you, whether it be the cleaning contractor or the CEO of the biggest company in the world, that you can articulate yourself and talk to them just as you and I are talking. Mm. That's really powerful stuff, Mike. <laughs> I think that's incredible. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Mike, no if, if we were to kind of summarize it in, um, in like simple sort of one, two, three format, like, okay, well, if you want to yep. become a conscious leader, this is what you got to do, this is what you got to do, and this is what you got to do. Uh, can we kind of try to summarize it in that? Sure, absolutely. So um, I'll give you three things in no particular order. To, firstly, why would you want to do this? You want to do this because you'll create better relationships. You'll see through things that are fog, smoke and mirrors in front of you. So you won't waste as much time. And you will also create more for yourself and for the universe. 
So that's why you want to do this. Here are your three techniques. First technique for you is to learn to just take that little bit of time in meetings and before meetings and before you talk on stages or do whatever you're doing to breathe, bring yourself into your body and ground yourself. Okay. So, and then look around your environment and check what's in your environment and understand your environment. So if you walk into a boardroom or into a job interview to just take that 10 seconds before you sit down, you sit down for your job interview and if you go, right. Okay. And it's literally that long. So that would be the first thing. But by that doing that, you'll ground yourself. Secondly, and most importantly for me, out of everything, is to know your personal values and what they are. And if you know and understand your personal values and you have a consciousness around those and you'll know when something's outside of that and you'll know what your boundaries are in your own life, and that's really important. And number three is to start uncovering and do some of the courses that are available anywhere on the internet really but do some good courses that allow you to look at your inner self and why you see the world in the way in which you do if you can recognize what those imprints are that have created you what those undercurrents are that annoy you when you, when they happen in the world those things then you'll become a better version of yourself because you'll understand yourself better we have a saying that um, the number one reason entrepreneurs fail is because they don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. So doing those three things will bring you into consciousness about who you are. Incredible. Well, thank you so much for all your wisdom at this episode, Mike. It's been amazing to have you and I look forward to our next week's episode. Bye.